Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. Last time, we descended both in the game and in real life further into madness. Uh, we learned that uh, the Dark Man may or may not be Dr. Gray. We learned that uh, Emily may or may not have been a resident there, just like with... Uh, Edward Carnby with that room. We learned that Emily had a husband or a fiance at the very least who she for a long time thought died in the war but then she realized that she repressed the memory of him actually being at Derseno Manor and um, the Spanish flu killed him off. And apparently she was ashamed of that don't know why. I don't think the Spanish flu is a really a taboo disease. I mean, like it was, it was a thing. It was a plague going on back then. I don't think it really meant anything. Whether you're rich or poor, I think you got the Spanish flu. I could be wrong. I'm not entirely sure. For some reason, she was afraid. Uh, she was uh, ashamed, but she came to terms with it. We also had Grace slap the shit out of us for whatever reason. But we did unlock, uh, potentially, a secret ending. Where we have to give Grace a toy of some kind. No idea what it is. Um, I just know um, one of the other objectives we have right now is to go talk to Dr. Gray. And I think that's the point of no return. So we want to make sure we finish off Grace's thing... Uh, give her the toy before we do that. But as of right now, we are stuck in the steamboat uh, with those fucking spiders. But I'm going to try and just run through it because I'm not going to spend the time fighting all these things if I can help it. If I have to, I have to, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, also... I don't know why I've put this off for so long. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter. Um, field of view. Is that better? Oh my god. You can actually see your fucking surroundings. Holy shit. That's so much better. Um, but. Display. Motion blur. Seriously? What game doesn't have a brightness setting? Oh, yes, please. Let's just... Please. Uh, it's all gonna run. I don't need it. It's all gonna run. That's okay. Okay, no. Oh, there is a brightness setting. Okay. No, turn down the contrast. Well, not too much. Or at least a darkness is a little bit better. That didn't really help much, but. Okay, this field of view thing, while I can certainly see my surroundings now, it's like a fisheye lens view. Okay, let's just see how the combat goes. I guess. 
Okay, now this... Field of view is too high. Let's try 80. Okay, it's definitely more manageable. It's definitely better. The boat has run aground. Crashed right into the bayou. Right into it. If I, I get know. the motor running, I could try backing into the river. Everything is kosher. Hope everyone's doing good. I've certainly calmed down from the last video. Um, yeah. I honestly never thought that I'd find a game like this so early on in my um, lucrative career as a YouTube content creator. I, I knew eventually I'd come across something like this. I didn't think it'd be this soon. What the fuck? Okay, so we know we have to go there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the the um, the engine. Oh, what the? That's new. Fucking die, please. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, what did I say? Right. Turn on the engine. And just, yeah, beeline it towards that fucking thing. And then we should, all, we, we're halfway there at that point. Are you kidding me? No fucking bullets anywhere? Spend half my ammo fighting fucking four of them. I can break it. <sighs> Have some ammo. No. Great. Oh. 
No. No, fuck you, game. Fuck you. How much ammo we got? So 14 bullets, 6 shotgun shells, and 41... 41 bullets for the machine gun. The Tommy gun. Oh my god, I forgot about the music. Last time it took me like half an hour to get through this part. And look at this, we're just breezing right through it. Like 10 minutes. certainly take them. I don't know who to do. I will take them. Nope. Nothing there. Okay. And we are done with this level. Supposed to die. What does that mean? That you were supposed to die. I'm the catalyst. I had to die to make the story happen. What story? What are you referring to, Jeremy? Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. Jeremy! You're not making any sense. Jeremy. Come back. Find your focus. Uncle? I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. I escaped my doom. Destiny. Again, find your focus. Jeremy! Oh, everything is wrong. <laughs> Nothing is in place. Hey, listen to me. We're gonna drown. Calm down, Miss Hartwood. You're not in any danger. <sighs> but, Jeremy, he was here, wasn't he? Miss Hartwood. I am beginning to suspect your family curse is catching up with you. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? No. No, I, I was just confused. I thought I saw him for a moment. 
I'm fine. I'll let you be. Miss, I want you to know I'm here to help. If you need me. So, Jeremy needed to die in order for the story to happen. But what story? I, I still don't get what Jeremy has to do with all this. Because the tree... The whole ritual is for the tree. It's for Shub. I guess it's... I don't know. I don't think it's Shub. But uh, I think the goat with the horns is Shub. I, I don't know. Regardless, it's for the fucking tree. The ritual they're performing has to do with the tree. Jeremy has nothing to do with it. And it's been there... I would assume since creation of this house. Because again, there's an observatory built around it. Or conservatory. It's conservatory built right around it. And besides, Jeremy has nothing to do with that tree. It's the dark man, which he made a pact with to prevent the tree from rising. So we're missing a few things, man. Like we're missing so much stuff. Is it, is it double again? A ghostly voice sounding like Jeremy called out for help. Emily couldn't quite understand where the voice was coming from. It somehow seemed to be a part of the place itself. All she could make out was that Jeremy was stuck and needed her to get the steamboat running. Be, okay. Oops. Emma, the steam. Oh. Emily felt she was losing the plot. What was she doing? Was she even helping Jeremy at this point? She tried to interpret the contract again and managed to make some tenuous connections between her actions and the list. The steamboat could have something to do with the self-deceit. And the unwelcomed reminder of John's true fate was certainly traumatic. Maybe she was making progress. If temper manic behavior was the final missing piece, then surely the answer must lie with Dr. Gray. It was time to push back on this bully. It was time to pay Dr. Gray a visit in his apartment. The steamboat was a hideaway that Jeremy had built over the last few days. Having seen his memories extracted and expanded into physical realms by the dog man, his unconscious mind had decided to take the chance that Jeremy could manifest a world in secret. A world that wasn't sanctioned by the dog man. Deploying his own self-deceit as a gambit against his dog master. Okay. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save here. If it'll let me. It won't let me save the game for some reason. Emily felt she was losing the We have two of these ones again. Why can we not save? Why the color change? Oh, it's story based. to go. Yes, here.
Oh, but I don't want to go in Gray's office. It's forcing me to go. Are you fucking kidding me? Ruth's room. Are we even able to go there? I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. I should find another way. Like, this is so stupid. Like, why lock someone into this fucking path? Ms. Hartwood, lock the door, will you? I'd rather not run into dear Dr. Gray if I can help it. This feels strange. So very strange. <sighs> that means I need to go to a previous save and do all this shit all over again. This place? It's like something from my childhood. It's just the private study of a very peculiar man. I think this is it. I'm properly mad. You should be. Dr. Gray's playing with fire. Their set is a powder keg of loonies, all ready to play their part in a murderous cult. I'm trying to say I've lost my mind, Detective. The Hartwood curse has caught up with me. I'm sure you're exaggerating. Try to focus on whatever you've been doing. Right. Breaking the Dark Man's contract. Does it even matter anymore? There's a book missing. I still have the key to Dr. Gray's office. Was there another part afterwards? I don't remember. A secret door. Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. I can't move. Okay, now I can move. Oh, that was a jump. Now we're talking. Great job, Emily. First off, let's get the key. Assuming it's still in the same place. Yep. Looks like it's been here a while. I can't believe I didn't see that before. First time entering the room. Can't believe she didn't see it before. Found anything? Oh, Dr. Gray's in so deep, I knew it. He's as mad as his patients. I mean, look at this. She who can till the soil of this sick world and begin again. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Absolute insanity. I know, right? I have the strangest sensation that this is somehow Jeremy's room. What? No. This is Dr. Gray's private quarters. I 
I feel... I want to apologize, Detective, for my elusive behavior tonight. I'm glad you haven't given up on me and my uncle yet. Ah, oh, you got nothing to apologize for. In fact, you've been out of my hair for most of the evening, you're self-reliant, and you've been helping with your own particular brand of investigation. As far as I'm concerned, you're an exemplary client. Thank you, Edward. Mr. Carnby. Good to finally meet you, Mr. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother, Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes, you're from... Yeah, we've, we've heard about this. We've read all this stuff before. This has something to do with the numbers for the talisman. The snake dagger. Yeah, we read that too. So again, I don't know how this is supposed to equal zero, all zeros, but I remember that much. It's a weird... Hello? Who's there? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the dark man. You can't save him. Jeremy is with the dark man? Where? Who is he? What, what is the dark man? The Hotwood curse. He will come for you too. The voice on the phone was somehow familiar, yet so strange. Who was that? Emily felt detached, as if watching herself from across the room, awkwardly attempting to help Detective Conby solve the case of her missing uncle. What was happening to her? And why did this place feel so familiar? Might as well carry on carrying on. Telephone ring, right? No, the telephone's cut off. I tried calling the police earlier. Yeah, that's what I figured. None of Emily's experiences seemed to line up with reality anymore. Even when she accomplished something, it seemed absurd. Was this what it was like to be completely consumed by the hardwood curse? Not mind numbing terror. But a continuous state of confusion breaking you down. Jeez, what is going hey, on? Mr. Carnby? What? Nothing, right? That's a closet. That's right, Detective. I'll see you later. I have to finish this. You're going inside the closet? I know what it looks like, but I can't explain it, much less justify it. All right. You do what you have to do, miss. Goodbye, detective. This glitchiness. Okay, I'm very sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on. 
going on with this fucking game. The icy wastes before her felt profound and deeply wrong. Like staring into a grisly wound, revealing bone under the fleshy mounds of muscle seeing layers of Jeremy that she would rather stay hidden. Okay. found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt. Okay. So we want to go towards the coast. Walk so slow, man. Yeah, I'm trying. Can't even dodge. Uh, might as well use up my shotgun. Who are you? What do you want? Talk about this. It's too late for that. It's too late. Oh, right in the face. bitch yeah say like that oh saw something here is it a brick no it's a bullet it is a bullet 
All right, let's fix this constellation here. If the dark man is going to be in the middle of your existence, Jeremy, then at least set everything in order. Easy as pie. unclear what that did, you know? And now, the first of the two bosses in this game. after me you're in my head now in that case I hope you enjoy your stay so now when the mask comes off Emily, stop! don't worry oh. we got you because when Carby hit the dark man his mask came off and for a split second we see dr. gray So at this point, we don't even know who the Dark Man is. You are the last person I want to see. I wouldn't. Even, I don't even want to see you. Are you alone, or is he in there with you? Miss Hot, what is up? Heard you almost painted the foyer with your own blood and guts. <laughs> Good to see you still in one piece. Stick around, will you? It's going to be an exciting night. Good to see you made it, miss. And all that ruckus. 
Lotta gave you a healthy dose of that sleeping juice. Wasn't sure you'd be waking up again. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Tried to shoot yourself. Sorry for the manhandling, but we just wanted to save you. You also stabbed Jeremy in the eye. Is he all right? Mm, he's a little strange, but everything else is back to normal. <laughs> Whack. Really? I broke the pact? I don't know what you did, but you worked. Let's see you standing up, miss. Yeah, so this part I get. You broke the pact with the Dark Man, which is why the ritual goes along Jeremy, with are you okay? Edge. I'm so sorry for hurting you. How can you ever forgive me? Emily, I missed you so. I do hope you'll stay with me for a while. Uncle, what's wrong? Is it anesthesia? He, he seems so meek. I wish that was the case. It turns out that you managed to lobotomize him. It's actually quite impressive, considering your technique. This is permanent? You sacrificed a piece of his mind to save the whole. It's a little like treating a bad knee by cutting off the leg. It's blunt, but it works. That's terrible! Perhaps. But at least he won't suffer anymore. Do you remember the Dark Man, Jeremy? Ah, yes. Where did he go? I hope he is doing all right. You see? With a violent stab, you made any future treatment quite redundant. I assume you will be bringing him with you back to New Orleans. I will. I just need to find Detective Carnby. Okay, awkward silence. Everything was back to normal. Did any of it really happen? What had Emily actually been doing all night? I still have the objective, give the kids something to play with. Interesting. Could I have made an offering with Carnby while I, like going down to the tree? Or is that exclusively to chapter four? I'll be back soon, Jeremy. Then we'll go back to the city. How fun. I do like riding in the motor car. Is there any chance he'll relapse back to his previous condition? None at all. He is forever cured from all worries and other difficult feelings. Must be nice. Have you seen Detective Carnby? I'm sure he's around here somewhere, poking and prodding. Poking and prodding. Emily reluctantly accepted the bittersweet end to her journey. She had found Jeremy and brought him back to DeSetto. But at what cost? Partial blindness and permanent brain damage. Maybe it was for the best, she tried to tell herself. Jeremy did seem more docile, happier even. And whatever spell of insanity she had suffered herself, everything was finally set right. It was time to find Detective Conby and head back to New Orleans. Okay, I'm going to create a save file here. Good to see you're still with us, miss. Are you hungry? No, thank you. I'm still a bit woozy. No one's eating the gumbo. Ooh, is that gumbo? I make it every year. We set up a little feast by the wishing tree and start a new year together. Have you seen Mr. Carnby? 
I haven't seen him for a while. Maybe he left. Somehow I doubt that. Okay. You know what? I'm not going to talk to everyone right now. What's this? What are you doing? Preparing for the ceremony. This time she will come. I'm sure of it. Who's coming, Grace? The black goat of the woods. The mother of a thousand young. I hope you find what you're looking for, Grace. Whatever it is that you need. That's a terrible thing to say. Well, you know what? I meant every fucking word, because fuck you. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just going to continue on without giving the toy. Because I know that I can give the toy here. And I just saved. Let's see the ending. I know it's going to be stupid. But, whatever. I'm not going to talk to anyone just because... Should I? Uh, honestly, I don't care. Everyone we'll go back afterwards. Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, you need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Oh, there are praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever there, 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 ever what are you doing? This is madness! This heals what he's doing. She's just a child! Edward! Get out, Emily! We're leaving! No! There has to be a death of us! No! Look at you doing now. Oh, Come with me. Hartwood arrived only moments later. Together they said farewell and left the people of Desetto to their St. John's Eve festivities. As Conby sat down in the driver's seat, he was filled with a sense of melancholy. Emily didn't seem happy, just relieved that they were leaving. And Jeremy just sat quiet, like a dog beaten into submission. As he started up the car, 
Emily handed Detective Conby an envelope with the money she owed him. He sighed, accepted the bittersweet end, and drove back to New Orleans. I don't think that's quite what happened. I have to stop that thing. It's going to kill everything in its way. Yeah. No, Ruth. Get yourself together, Emily. You have to finish this. Fuck off. And now I can't get the bottle. Fuck you. Oh my god. Fucking finally.
Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Come on, come on, come on. First try, baby. <sighs> Emily, are you all right? I don't understand anything that just happened. What was that? The whole gang was a cult dedicated to something called the Black Goat of the Woods. I've been trying to gather as much information as I could. It was only after you started talking about monsters that I thought maybe there was some truth to all the nonsense I was finding. Where's Jeremy? Uncle! Are you alright? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Don't say that. You made it out. Be happy. Okay? Whack. I just want that, like, it. that whole right. where you just, like, put, just punch his Thor. That's what I expected. That's what I wanted. But you can't always get what you want. back to New Orleans. Come on, Jeremy. Let's go. Can I come? No. Don't leave her. You have to take her to Hell's Kitchen. What on earth are you talking about? Save New Orleans from the Black Goat. Okay. So, we did that. Now let's load back and give the, uh, the toy to Grace. And then we'll see what we're up against. Yeah, yeah, we can skip all this. Jeremy. Alright, fuck all y'all. Here, go play with this. Does that to their toy? This is fun. 
Hey, kid. What are you up to? Nothing much. Yeah? Anything I'm gonna have to pay for? You're bored, aren't you? Yeah, I can tell. You wanna see if we can tear your mother away from the play? Can you believe they're still going? It's been hours. You forgot this. Well, I just didn't want you to think we had abandoned you in there. Can we go home? Yes, please. Can we? What? You guys didn't like the play? It was all right. A little difficult to follow. Oh, I agree. Let's just say there were moments where it uh, left me alone in the dark. <laughs> oh, God. He said it. That's the name of the play. We can what? go home now. What do you know? Did you like it, sweetie? There should have been a hedge maze. A hedge maze? Uh-huh. And pirates. <laughs> that would have been fun. Well, maybe next time. What just happened? That's the name of the trophy. Or the achievement. What just happened? What did just happen? What the fuck was that? Okay, let me... Jesus Christ. Let's see if I can do this with Carnby. Oh, it saves here too. Well, if it isn't the hero of... Okay, let me see if I can do some kind of offering. Actually, before I do that, I'm just curious if the Lanyaps all carried over. They did. So I'm still missing a bunch. Do I solve the objective? Give the kids something to play with. Uh... this I want the offering thing okay let me load a more previous save place for hiding Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave an offering at the Whispering Tree. Okay, let's let's do that. That's what this evening needed. Some ambiance. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. I don't care about any of this stuff. We just want to get to the conservatory. Um, through here. Christ, what the hell was that? Here, then here. The girl you brought. What is that?
I'll remember. You should have it. She will call on you when it's time. Do not ignore her. I, I don't know. Where did I leave? I'm just gonna keep on playing the game until something happens, I guess. The two uh. orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So, I'll keep on playing, uh, and when it gets to. I'll, I'll cut to whenever something happens. Hey guys, welcome back. So, I went all the way to the end, and the only option I'm getting is to either give Race uh, the toy, or continue on to the actual regular ending, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's something that affects the regular ending. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, I'll wait for Miss Hartwood. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone I'm not is gonna comfortable. skip it just in Doctor, case. I Something new. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, you need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Even. Oh, there are praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Hear us, us, mother, and take pity on us. Hear us, mother, and take pity on us. Take pity on us. Are you crazy? This is what happened, Stop! 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 Jeremy, come with me! Get over here! Jeremy, come with me! Jeremy, come here! No! There has to be a number one! We're the same. I can't let that monster leave Dersetto. I have to stop it. Detective Conby returned just as the festivities were about to begin. Emily was grateful that she didn't have to sit through whatever ceremony the people had to... Okay, no. So, clearly something went wrong. I didn't do the thing I was supposed to do. Um...
Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. I would never have gotten this. So, I don't know if you guys heard, there was a certain point during the, the cutscene after I activated it, when Emily comes in, she throws like the, the fire at like the tree. There's like a, there's like, for like two seconds, you hear a sound like, Doo. you're supposed to do something at that point. So let's head back there. Everyone knows what to do. Y'all know the new world. You're supposed to look left. Detective, get my uncle out of here. No, Emily. I get it now. She needed me to break the pact. She needed me to bring her grace. I did everything for her. I just realized I belong here. I'M ONE OF HER YOUNG! What are you saying? <laughs> you have to run, Emily! You'll have to run! That's fucked up. Is that Ruth in the car? Uh, what? She's like, oh, all right. That was it? You're not even going to show me the tree fucking stampeding towards New Orleans? One of a thousand young join a cult. <sighs> Weak ass endings, man. Okay. There is yet another ending, a fifth ending. So this was considered Edward's dark ending. And we have yet to see Emily's dark ending. The one we saw with uh, Edward, uh, Emily, and Grace, that was kind of like the whimsical or joke ending. So in order to get Emily's ending there was another just go here uh, I think it was in Lafayette Cemetery anyway so uh, let me just load it up and I'll show you yeah 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 so the lanyaps here so this secret objective, this was the the joke ending. All the world's a stage. The goat without horns, this was Edward's dark ending. Dying with, with dignity, this one is Emily's dark ending. Even this one, I don't know what this one does. Locks a hidden memory in the attic. Okay, so what I'm thinking, 
what do we need to do with dying with dignity? At this point, I'm going to look it up. I, I, I don't care. Might as well just go through the whole thing. Okay, so this is near the ending again. Um, which is fine, because we kind of saved near the ending uh, at the steamboat. I can pretty much rush through that and like rush through all that to near the end in like 20 minutes. Not the biggest deal in the world. The only thing is this one here, the Heartwood Curse. I'm going to have to go back uh, through the different saves and get these items. I might as well just complete the whole thing. Um, I, I'm going to have to see... Um, yeah, I'm only missing, so the Hardwood Curse, and then this just one extra, the, this Thousand Young. I might as well just do it all, just so I can completely be done with the game. Uh, okay, so what I'm missing here with this one, Dying with Dignity. So cheat music during the Catacomb section. Oh, here we go. There we go. Watch the paint off Jeremy's portrait and learn the secret sign. The sign resembles a blessing. Save that the first and little fingers are both folded beneath the thumb, whilst the second and third fingers are held up. This dark blessing is said to protect against evil, much like the sign of the horns, which is quite similar, but has a reverse schema. The truth is that the dark blessing is a sign of submission, a complete capitulation to our lesser selves. The sign only protects from evil in the sense that you become a part of it. It was the chapel where Jeremy had promised to mourn the mysterious Perosi. Maybe soon she would be able to talk to her uncle and have him end this madness. She just needed to find a way inside the chapel. Okay. I know what to do now. So, we got... Um, yeah, so it says watch to paint off uh, Jeremy's pa uh, picture and learn the secret sign. So what we're going to do, we're going to load um, here. And I'm going to run through this area. Okay, so... We're in Dr. Gray's office, or his apartment, I guess. There's a book missing. A secret door. Looks like it. Careful. Let me go first. Okay, so now we head in. Now we're talking. Great job, Emily. Okay, so then we head to this room here. Should I this... be doing this? Do I want to know? Use paint then on your uncle's painting. We want to do this. Jesus Christ, why would you paint this, Jeremy? What on earth possessed you? Oh God. Submit to the Dark Man. So submit to the Dark Man happens I can't after I didn't see that before. Uh, we fight uh, what was his name? Osgood or Ostgood, whatever his name was. This has something to do with the numbers for the talisman. 
Uh, we come back to reality and the gray man, uh, the dark man is chasing us. Okay. Now this is where the cutscene will change. It should change anyway. Or it'll allow me to do something different. Much like with Carmi where we have to turn our head. Here, we have to put the gun down. It seems like you have to do with like the left uh Where are you stick, Emily? but it's actually the right. I'm in his temple. Why? It's what I see when I close my eyes. Are you afraid? No. Not anymore. Radical acceptance. Submit to the Dark Man. <laughs> that made even less sense than Carby's dark ending. Well, that's not necessarily true. Because she did say that the, the pack that we picked up from the temple was actually her, not Jeremy. I'm going to wait for the credits to end just in case there's something. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut out the sound here, the music, just so I don't get um, copyright claimed. So... Again, I, I feel like I'm reading the story wrong i have to be because there's a lot of things that just i feel like it keeps going back and forth on what this on what the game is trying to tell us story wise a lot of contradicting stuff that's a cool image uh with the tentacles and shit um it goes back and forth a lot to me and that's my problem with this game my biggest problem is that yuri lowenthal um it can't decide whether it wants to have all this stuff happen in our head or not there's things that point to both to both ways because i mean we picked up for example we picked up the the tommy gun in the uh the wharf area the docks but we have it with us in the real world um even documents even lanyards right but then you know for example carmby whenever he's um 
drowning in the water in his story when he gets pulled under when he's trying to save the kid and the guy from the car he gets pulled under he wakes up in a bathtub you know what i mean so it could be like the whole sucker punch movie where it's like it it's distorted reality it's he's not actually doing what he's doing in real life he's actually moving around interacting with stuff and he ends up in the bathtub which makes him think that he's drowning shit like that right again the game can't decide one way like there's ambiguity and then there's this flat out um not knowing what the like not giving not a clear-cut answer but it doesn't have to be clear-cut but the story itself in terms of how it's trying to tell the story can't decide that's what i hated about sucker punch too but i mean that's a that's a whole other tangent my second problem is there is very little interactivity with the other residents of um of Dorsetto. which in a psychological horror it you you need those kind of characters to kind of help ground the story a little bit I know that, you know, we meet Ruth a few times, Grace, uh, Dr. Green, all that shit. But it's more after shit happens, it's like they're even more as they need them before. They don't make sense either. Um, like even Dr. Green, like Dr. Green does not act like a psychologist. He's, he's a smarmy asshole. But he's not a psychologist. Like, I don't... Even for, like, that time where, like, they were all high and mighty and shit. That's not how they act. He seems to me like uh, like an owner of a plantation. Where, like, business is business and all that shit. He, doesn't, he clearly doesn't care about the well-being of others. Let, let's be honest there. He, he clearly doesn't. Um... Even with <sighs> Jeremy does not make sense to this story. As I said many times, it's fairly clear that this is Emily's this camp this whole game makes more sense through Emily's eyes. It's it's her story. The only reason that I'm seeing that Jeremy has any uh impact on this story is the letter that he wrote her saying, you know, uh, stay away. Which obviously makes her come. Because if, again, if the, the deal, the pact that was made with the Dark Man impacts Emily and not Jeremy, then what's the point of Jeremy? I'm assuming she made the pact with the Dark Man at some point when she was visiting her husband. But why she would make a pack then, I have no idea. And I didn't make this clear before. If she was the one that made the pack with the Dark Man, then she had to have known that the rest of the people, the residents at Dr. Gray, were performing a ritual to raise this thing, and yet she is oblivious to this fact when we play this character. Even when she... Even when, like, the whole fact that she used to come here to visit her husband, even that lie she told herself, we overcame that. She's still oblivious. Which makes no sense. <laughs> and Carmby as... This the story makes very little sense as Carmby... Through Carmby's eyes. Okay, there were, there was nothing there. I really want to like this game, guys. I, I don't start a gameplay wanting data. Why would I do that? Why would I waste my time playing a game I hate? Uh, that I don't like. I really wanted to like this game. Bugs be damned. You know, like the... Bad... Uh, combat mechanics 
you know, buggy game, whatever. I can overlook that shit. Am I immersed in the story? Am I immersed in, in what's going on? Am I intrigued to the mystery of Dercetto? That's what matters to me. Okay, so... We still have that one, um... That... What was it? I'm just going to continue on here, uh, just just so I can check the land app stuff. Oh, love it. That's fine. I can't. Yeah, yeah, I killed you. Yeah. So we still need what is it? One, two, three more land apps. Thousand young. So this gives us forbidden knowledge, and this one gives us. A hidden memory in the attic. I might as well collect them. Um, I'll have to see where they are. Okay, guys. So, um, I figured out where all the land apps are. I had to start a new game because, of course, I did. Um, but the good thing is. Uh, all three land apps that we're missing, they're all in Chapter 2, which is where I am right now. Um, the first one is actually in here. Looks sturdy. Um, yeah, and I'll be opening this. So, pretty much the only way you can open this is if you know the combination uh, from a previous save. Or from a previous playthrough, rather. So, 913. Wow, I can't believe I guessed the combination. I must you can't be keep some... me out. Open all the safes and locks in the game. There you go. Alone in the dark. I can't believe I guessed the combination. I must be some kind of genius. Yeah, there you go. It's an old copy or burned up copy of the book or technically the game. And that's actually the front cover of the, the main game. Or not the front cover, the box cover. I love how they spell Pharaoh differently. Like on the page, it's without an H at the end, and the, at the bottom, witness the Black Pharaoh, it's with an H. Kind of genius. Yeah. Okay. So the other two. Oh, you fucked me up here. So, the desiccated palette, which is part of the... Um, so, wait. So, this one here, the desiccated palette. <clears throat> it's in the hateful mound. So, we enter the top of the boathouse and squeeze through the gap between the wooden boxes and oil drums. Okay. And then, this one, the thousand young... The Forsaken Crucifix. Uh, unlock the food and wine cellar and look inside the pigeonholes. Um, room six key. Okay. Duck. So it sucks that you have to open the document to close it. Paul. So as of right now, I don't know if I can actually get in this. the cellar. Let's take it. Yeah, I started a new game. I just basically ran past everything just to get to this point. So the cellar is over here. Okay. I 
need the key. So we need the cellar key. And I don't remember where it is. That's it. We can't go back in there. You know what's that stain? Looks like some kind of rot. Um, I'll come back once I make some progress. Okay, so... I believe it's that over there. Because... Uh, because I know we always kept on going that way and getting pushed out by the bat. There's something over there. It says we have to squeeze between the uh, boxes and oil drums. I think it's like right here. Yeah, okay. Man, you take an extra couple of steps and you fucked up. There it is. Hmm, what's this? So now we have this. The Heartwood Curse is what they call it. There wasn't much of a vocabulary for mental illnesses back in the days. There are hardly enough now. The Heartwoods carry a troubling chemical imbalance in their brain, which they have managed to pass down through generations. As they grow old, they are overtaken by overwhelming melancholy that unavoidably leads to suicide. Oh, you want the real story? Well, who can say? It was written that way. It was written that way. So this unlocked hidden memory in attic. Let's see how we can get that. Okay, so it looks like uh, once we're able to head up to the attic, you know, we kept on saying, uh, I kept on saying that the noose, you could press A, but like nothing happens. Um, that's when something happens. Now that we have this set, uh, we trigger a cutscene. I, I don't know what it is. Um, but I have to figure out a way to get there. Um, I don't remember what, what chapter it's in. I'm guessing chapter three. Um, I know it leads to... No, chapter four, it leads to the steamboat, doesn't it? Right before the steamboat. Well, we have one more line you have to get. Uh, I just have to get out of, uh, just have to get out of this area and back to, to well, I was gonna say the real world, but Dorsetto, yeah. um, and go to the cellar. Yeah. So we'll come back to that. <sighs> the box. Okay, so we got the cellar key. Now let's head to the said cellar. Guessing, oh, is that it? That's easy to miss, man. I guess that's the point. Look at all the free stuff I got. Find all the lanyaps. Asleep, with an anesthetized mind, Yermi filtered these words from Darsetto's gangrenous ground. Ever their praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, mother. 
and take pity on us. Accept our sacrifice and judge our worth. Ya, Shubnigrath. Ya, Shubnigrath. The black goat of the woods with a thousand young. Okay. Yeah, and that completes our set. Now... Um, let's save just in case. And now I need to find... Maybe this one. Okay, so I think this is just the beginning of chapter four. We'll need to head back up there. We weren't, oh, I know we just came out of there. We weren't able to do anything because that was a cutscene. I remember that. Um, okay. Welcome back. Uh, when we're able to go up to the attic. Okay, we have made it to the attic. And we're back here. Well, perfect time to have a look around this place. So let's take a look here. They're coming. I have freed hellish forces and now the price must be paid. Yaseto is the prey of evil. The sun has set. They will find my body, but will not have my soul. I can imagine the master's fury and the terror in the hearts of his slaves. I hear their footsteps. Some may understand what I have done. May God forgive me. Farewell. What would happen if I refuse? Would the whole world come apart? Or would everything conspire to make a new story? Maybe one where I live. I'm sorry, Frederick. Nobody knows what happened. Consider ending it all. Okay. So... Jeremy was considering ending it all, uh, and, you know, completing the... or... what is it called? Like basically stamping the approval on the pack with the dark man he's gonna kill himself to um you know have the dark man protect new orleans the world from should from coming uh from waking up I, I don't know how we would have done that i don't know so in between uh the gameplay i actually paused because i needed a little break um, and I tried to look into what the story is about, who the dark man is, that kind of shit. Right. And uh, again, funnily enough, a lot of people on Reddit are like, Oh, the story is great. What are you talking about? It's, it's fucking great. I'm having a great time. There are a few people that are like, the, the story makes zero fucking sense. Like I'm not alone in this. So I'm, I'm happy on that account. Some people are saying that it's a Lovecraftian story. You know, it's cosmic horror. It's not necessarily supposed to make sense. No, that's not fucking true. There has to be some form of coherence in the story structure. I don't need to understand everything. There can be some mystery left uh, up to interpretation to the viewer or the player or whatever. Totally fine. 
I love cosmic horror. Not everything has to be described in detail when you're reading a story. Some things are better left to the imagination. Some things are better left up to your own interpretation. Perfectly fine. But you can't have a story, an entire story left uh, in ambiguity. You, you can't have that happen. Because you can't... It's not relatable to anything. The only re one of the main reasons people love these kind of stories is a there's a relatable character that is forced into unrelatable situations, right? The every man, especially with Cthulhu, uh, especially with like Lovecraftian horror, most of the characters are every man is is like the every man. Maybe like a detective here, maybe like an artist or whatever, right? they've come across some really fucked up situations. And that's what makes it scary because you can potentially put yourself in that situation. That's what, that's what it's meant to be like. If you, if nothing in the story is relatable, if you cannot come to terms with what the character is going through, I, you, you lost me. I'm confused how to feel. I'm confused uh how to make sense of any kind of situation it doesn't work not for me anyway so that's the cosmic horror aspect of it the dark man a lot of people are saying is a uh, nyarlathep uh nyarlathep however it's pronounced which I, I know they've made mention quite a number of times um and for those of you that don't know um Nyarla how do you pronounce it Um, there you go. Uh, Nyarla, Nyarla Thotep. Um, he's a Lovecraftian character and he acts very much like the dark man. He's actually called the dark man. Um, I kind of completely forgot about the story. Again, I've left, I've left, I've read Lovecraft in the past. I don't remember too many of the stories. It's been... It's been over a decade. I'll be completely honest. Um, he very much acts like the Dark Man, where he goes around, collects followers um, by, you know, performing tricks and all that kind of stuff. And um, to what end does he gain followers? I don't know. He's an Egyptian uh, pharaoh or a god, if you want to call it that. A lot of pharaohs were kind of considered gods at the time. All well and good. It still doesn't explain what he has to do with the story. So let's assume Nyala Tothep, um, he, he put on his stage play, Jeremy, his dad, uh, Algernon was the name, and Frederick, I'm guessing, is the brother, Emily's dad. I'm guessing. It, it's never confirmed. But considering how many times he says Frederick and he's like, I'm sorry, has to do with his brother. How his brother died, we don't know. Since the hardwood curse is they pretty much all end by committing suicide, we can assume that he committed suicide. That that's that's all I can gather from this. So that's basically the, the Heartwood curse. What does this have to do with Jeremy? Like, oh, sorry, what does this have to do with Nyarlathotep in this story? Because again, it's left um, annoyingly ambiguous as to whether the Nyarlathotep that we're seeing is real or if it's Dr. Gray. And it very well could be one of those things where uh, in Emily's story, it's real. In Edward's story, the Dark Man is not real. Very well could be that point because, again, uh, near the ending with Edward, when we got chased down by the Dark Man after beating Ostot, um, the, the, the squid guy, 
we hit the dark man, the mask comes off, and it's Dr. Gray. Why he doesn't say anything afterwards when he wakes up, before the whole ritual, who the fuck knows. In Emily's story, Nerlathotep has to be real. Because, again, the... the the uh what is it called the the pact that we find she says it's more about her than it is about jeremy oh i'm playing edward right now um i was gonna go back to the it's, it's fine it doesn't matter she says it's about it's it's her pact i don't know how she figures that probably because i don't know during her when she was visiting her husband at Dorsetto. Maybe she went mad herself, and maybe that's why she had a room there for a little while. I, I don't know. And why Dr. Green never brings it up. Maybe he wasn't there at that time. I don't know, but as far as I know, he is the only psychiatrist there. He, it, it's, his, it's his institute. Um... And, again, how she doesn't know, based on Jeremy's letter, that everyone is is part of this whole madness, part of this, uh, trying to create the, trying to do the ritual, bring Shibnagrath, wake him up. I, I, I don't know. There's too many holes. It's like, it's like I'm trying, I'm squinting so hard to see the shape of the story, if that makes sense. And I can see little, I can see the main outline of the story, but I cannot see the details. It's like trying to see like one of those 3D pictures, you know, it's like all different colors. You're supposed to like lay, like uh, make your eyes lazy and just something will like pop up. I, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I cannot see, I know how to do it, but I can't see what the image is for some reason. Like I'm not at like the right length or whatever. And I know I'm going in circles around this. I know, again, I want to like this story. I want to like this game. It's interesting. It's interesting enough that it's held my attention. But ultimately, it's it's so incoherent, I, I just don't care. If you guys can make out any semblance of the story, uh, please let me know in the comments. Even if it's years later, I'm still interested. Well, who knows if I'll be interested years later from now, but I want to know. I'll, 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 I'll probably watch a video of something, uh, someone who believes they know what's going on. I don't know. Only thing I know is I'm done with the game. We've seen all five endings. We've collected all land apps. We've seen all the different cutscenes with everyone. There's there's nothing left to show. So that does it for Alone in the Dark 2024. Thank you all so much for watching and putting up with my insanity playing through this game. Uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.